Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about a friend of mine, Lamar Clark. He was a track boss up to Bingham. So stay tuned. Lamar Clark, track foreman, Bingham Canyon. Today's video is about a track foreman and my friend, Lamar Clark. We met when I was on his track gang during a cutback from Hall Tracks in 1974. He was a great boss, one of the few that could pull a bunch of rowdy men together into a working unit. But Lamar Clark was more than just a track boss. He was once a professional boxer, setting world records, some that will probably never be broken. Lamar Clark trained and sparred with Gene Fomer. Now, he was the middleweight champion of the world in 1957 until 1962, with a short interruption, taking the title away from the legendary Sugar Ray Robinson on January 2nd, 1957. Gene would be known as the Utah Cyclone or the Mormon Mauler. Gene Fomer also worked at Bingham Canyon Mine, well, for a short time, both Gene Fomer and Lamar Clark manager and trainer was Marv Jensen. These images show Lamar Clark and Gene Fomer and Gene's two brothers, also boxers, Jay and Don Fomer, training. The Fomers lived down the street from me in South Jordan. Gene lived in West Jordan on the border of South Jordan. They all lived along 2200 West. Now here's some photos of Gene and his brothers, Jay and Don Fomer. And then some images of Gene Fomer and Lamar Clark sparring together. In this fighting group, Lamar fought in the heavyweight category. Lamar Clark would even fight Muhammad Ali. Back then, his name was Cassius Clay. Lamar Clark was from Cedar City, Utah. He was a chicken farmer. His amateur career started in 1956. He won the Intermountain AAU and Golden Gloves heavyweight title. And he was the corner finalist in the Western Golden Gloves in Chicago. In 1957, he once again won the Intermountain AAU championship in the heavyweight division. Also, at the National AAU championship in Boston, he won the Regional Golden Gloves at heavyweight. By December 2nd, 1958, his final amateur record was 25 wins and 2 losses. Lamar's first four professional fights took place in Cedar City, Utah in January. Fights on the 4th, 11th, 18th, and on the 21st. The first fight was won on points. The next three by knockouts. Lamar would be known for his powerful hitting, his knockout slugging power. He will set a record for the most consecutive knockouts, winning 44 straight fights by knockout. To prove that his hitting power was not a fluke, manager Marv Jensen promoted three fights on the same night, November 10, 1958. They took place in Kanab, Utah. Lamar knocked out all three opponents. Just one month later, December 1, 1958, he will fight six people on the same night, knocking out five in the first round, setting another record, putting him in the Guinness Book of World Records. The night Lamar Clark fought six opponents, he fought them at Bingham. Now, I always thought that he had those fights at the Gimbal Club in Bingham, since they had many fights there. This photo is a fight at the Gimbal Club, but not Lamar's. This record shows the fights were held at Bingham High School Gymnasium in Copperton, Utah, just down from Bingham. When I was working with Lamar on the track gang, he would grab you and put you in a clinch and start hitting you at close range. I was always surprised how hard he could hit. These are some fun photographs. Left to right, it's Gene Fomer, then Don Fomer, Paul Armstrong, Jay Fomer, and Lamar Clark. It said it was taken at the Ranch Cafe in Verno, Utah. The next photo, left to right, Nedra Fomer, Don's wife, Jean, then Paul Armstrong, Jay and his wife Marilyn, and Lamar Clark. Probably all together for the Phil Paxton fight on January 16, 1959. 
It was held at Uinta High School's gym in Vernal, Utah. Another interesting fact is that Lamar Clark fought Tony Burton on the polo grounds in Palm Springs, California. The fight was refereed by the famous fighter Jack Dempsey. Tony Burton will go on to be in the Rocky movies. This is a cool picture, left to right, with Lamar Clark, promoter Hardy Downing, and the legendary fighter Jack Dempsey. Probably for the Palm Springs fight on April 4th, 1959. Lamar won by knockout in the fourth round. Lamar's first loss was on April 8th, 1960, ending his 44th streak of knockouts to Sonny Bordalo. It was a hard-fought fight, with both men being knocked down. It was bloody and brutal. Sony won in the ninth round by technical knockout. They say Lamar punched himself out in the first round. It was the first Lamar fight televised. Lamar also lost his next fight to Pete Rodemacher on June 29, 1960. The fight was held at Dirks Field, a ballpark in Salt Lake City, Utah. This fight went 10 rounds. Pete won by technical knockout. Years later, talking to Lamar about this fight, he told me that this was a hard fight on him. He said he slept for about a week after the fight. Lamar's last fight was with Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, on April 19, 1961. Clay knocked him out in the second round, breaking his nose. After the fight, Lamar will retire from boxing at the age of 28. Lamar had 51 fights. 47 wins, 45 by knockout, 3 losses, and 1 draw. Lamar Clark was born December 1, 1933 in Cedar City, Utah. He stood 5 foot 10 inches, weighed 181 pounds when he was fighting. Lamar died November 5, 2006 at the age of 72.